What's your parents' worst rule? Story one. For me, I was hit, spanked, smacked for just about anything as a kid. And if there was an issue, I, deemed a troublemaker, was the one to be beaten. Then they ask what happened. Oh, so it was an OP. My family then punished that kid the same way I was. Also, my mom at one point, when I was 11 or 12, slammed her fist into my bed's headboard, grabbed my face and screamed that fist should have met my nose. What did I do? Tired of cleaning for four hours straight with no rest or food in my stomach, pushed a few toys under my bed. I was about 13 when my family stopped beating me, but that didn't stop them from taking my door for two years because a cousin of mine broke it by playing on it and it was my fault. My cousin said I was not the one in fault, but my family said it was still my fault. I only got a door back once the family rearranged everyone into new bedrooms and I wanted the smallest bedroom as I had already occupied that doorless second smallest room for years. And don't forget the time I got a low B in math, my weakest subject, in ninth grade, and all my books were taken from early September to late November. I'm a bookworm who reads to combat my anxiety and depression, and that punishment only made my depression and anxiety worse, along with dimming my love for reading ever so slightly. Plus, I was banned from playing Pokemon for life in middle school. I have autism and was hyper-focused in what I like, and that was Pokemon. I just watched the show and played the games, Pokemon White being my first ever Pokemon game. My parents gave me a lifelong ban from anything Pokemon. I'm in my early 20s and have yet to touch Pokemon, more out of respect for that ban. Also, I don't have an interest in Pokemon yet. Any new games I want, but I don't as I don't see the joy of a franchise I was banned from because of my parents. My last Pokemon game I recall playing was X or Y, not sure which, but that was the last Pokemon game I played. I was thinking this was going to be a joke entry, like it was going to be revealed that this was like the beginning of like Harry Potter or Cinderella or something. This was beyond what the worst rule was. This was just straight up abuse. And it seems to have affected this person long after he's grown up. Has he moved out of the house yet? I would hope he could get away soon. Story 2. My father hated lying and hiding things. Do not lie to him or hide anything from him no matter what. A simple lie that slipped out would be a week of no video games, no hanging out with friends, and no playing games with my parents. Same if I said any variant of, I'm bored or this is boring, etc., because I have so much stuff I can't be bored. A bigger lie, or what he thought was a lie, could be between two to three months of no fun allowed, aside from reading books he bought for me. Biggest was a little over three months, because I tried playing my PSP in my room without asking before my allotted time for games. I actually ended up getting very good at lying because of this, since I had to be meticulous about everything I said near him. Punishments would come randomly if he believed I was lying or hiding something. He always wanted his truth, not the truth it seemed. Like I didn't get home at the time I normally would, I was ten minutes late, so to him I had to be doing substances and lost everything for two months when I actually ran into a friend and talked to him for a bit and was exhausted from not getting much sleep the night before so my eyes were bloodshot. Getting home at a specific time was not a rule, and he normally wasn't even home anyway, so I never thought it was a problem. He would also constantly take my phone to search everything in it, though he was bad at technology, so he only really checked installed apps, no games on phone allowed, and my messages, which is why to this day I barely use my phone and my parents will yell at me to look at my phone more than once a week, if 
even that, and opened my door if I ever tried to close it since a closed door meant secrets. I was never allowed privacy until I was 18 since privacy is hiding something. This just goes beyond lying. This is just paranoia. I mean, had the father ever been caught in any kind of lie before? I mean, if he didn't believe in lies so much, did he tell the kids about Santa or the Easter Bunny, or was he just straightforward with them and saying, oh no, they they don't exist? I, I kind of think the way he was willing to take fun away from the kids, that that's the route he probably would have taken. Story 3. My parents had this rule when I was a kid about no eating for any reason after dinner. One of my earliest memories was my parents being mad at my little sister for being hungry after dinner. I think this rule was to counteract the idea of my sister and I not eating food we didn't like, then getting a snack later. Okay, fine, but this was paired with my mom using meals as a time to give me guff about anything and everything related to my grades because deity forbid I not have straight A's. This led me to subconsciously changing my internal clock so I just wasn't hungry at any mealtime ever, but I also lived in crippling fear asking for food later than dinner time. So I started buying my own food around like 13, keeping it in a secure box at the very top of my closet so I could eat without inconveniencing my family, or even worse, accidentally waking them up. Well, my mom found out about this during one of her routine searches of my room to find something to punish me for if my grades weren't up to her standards, which I was aware of, but never before had she searched the top of the closet. I still don't know what I did to tick her off to that level, or if she just realized she hadn't checked there before and decided that apparently me buying my own food was a massive sin on principle, took my bed away for like a month alongside every single thing I could enjoy, threatened to take away my door next time, and then decided the no food after dinner rule ever existed, despite having repeatedly punished my sister for it. To this day, that is her crowning achievement of child punishment that she will even gloat to people about. But she's also surprised that I grew up to be an extremely paranoid person and will absolutely refuse to make food for myself if there's anyone around for any reason. Wow. So there's this blindness. I think I've said this statement before. There's a saying, the tree remembers, the axe forgets. And she's proud of this? And... I guess this person must be going through therapy or something because of this. It's one thing to try and teach kids good eating habits, and this is not that. This is the way to instill food-eating disorders in people. Eek. Story 4. My dad was very abusive, and I wasn't allowed to have emotions. It would result in him breaking stuff constantly, him gaslighting, guilt-tripping, and threatening to unalive himself and everyone else at home. He even tried to break my jaw once when my grandfather, who has issues with me being queer like my dad, decided me hugging my youngest sibling was touching them inappropriately. Also, he was ticked before I dropped out of college that I wasn't doing it full-time when I was extremely self-unaliving and was ticked at me for getting sexually assaulted. My dad was very awful, not just to me, but my mom too, pinning her even, and as road rage to the point of getting into fights and waving his machete at people. When I lived with my grandpa, I wasn't allowed to eat, cook, or microwave anything if he was home, or dress the gender I identify as even when I was an adult. Also, I wasn't allowed to tell him if he was doing anything that was very backwards. The last time I saw my dad, he was running after me with a knife, and with my grandpa last night was when I was just staring at him blankly when he came to visit from out of town, when I was helping him taking care of his very senile mom that thought me and my cousin were a married couple, probably because I'm mixed and white-passing, 
and my cousin is brown and had no idea who we were. She passed away earlier this month. When I lived with both my dad and grandpa, plus some traumas I went through led me to living in the streets. I honestly hate them both, and I hope they expire alone and miserable. Story 5. When my parents got divorced, I was in college. This is in England, so our college is different from what Americans call college. I think the closest thing they have to our college is trade school. I was closer to my dad, but my mom got the house and dad had to put his life back together, finding a new place to live, new car, new job. He was unemployed when the divorce started due to an autoimmune disease, etc. My mom went off the deep end when the divorce happened because she believed that she was owed everything. I was not allowed to contact my dad lest I risk getting kicked out of the house with very possibly nowhere else to go. Also, when dad moved out, my mom's boyfriend moved in as well, and he had no respect for any kind of privacy. He'd throw a fit if I closed the door to my room. He would insist that I would be up by around 7 in the morning no matter what, going so far as to pour some water, a small glass bowl, in order to get me out of bed if I wasn't getting up. He'd come into my room when I wasn't there and open my window for hours because he was hot a lot of the time. Yeah, not strict. Abuse. Also, when I got a job a few years later while still living with him, my mom would take me to the bank every now and again and have me ask the teller how much money was in my account in front of her. And then she'd tell me how much of that I had to pay. And she'd often take all but like a hundred pounds and call it rent. Story 6. When I was young, around the age of six, my mom had married my ex-stepdad, and he saw an opportunity to put in place strict rules to shape me into the perfection of his child, because I wasn't his, so he had to make sure I would be good enough to even be considered his child. He would always make me go to bed at 8 p.m., except for on weekends, which was 9.30. This was a problem when I was 12 and still going to bed at 8 and couldn't go to bed at 9 because any time my stepdad saw something wrong with me, getting overexcited over something or supposedly lying about when I went to bed the nights before, I'd still go to bed at 8 on weekends. He convinced my mom that I was a horrible child. He closed off any contact with the outside world, TV, movies, books, music, etc., or even speaking to friends. It didn't help that my teacher had decided I was a good child to be picked on. So needless to say, most people in the class didn't want to mess with me. I had severe depression and anxiety from my stepdad of fear that I'm always doing something wrong. My grades dropped as a result, and once he realized that hitting me with things or his hands wouldn't work, he started to cut me down on my food consumption. Not only was I a small kid, but I was skinny and had a fast metabolism. I was practically nothing but skin and bones by the age of 10. Only reason I got out of that stuff was because my mom and him were getting a divorce. So, let me guess. The divorce had nothing to do with the treatment of the kid, but it was all about their relationship. Maybe they did have problems, but this straight-up abuse of the kid was just not in the picture of what was wrong with their relationship, I bet which is really sad. Story 7. Oh boy. Here we go. 1. My parents would take my video games away from me even after I graduated high school and forced me to wait until they gave me my games for me to play them. 2. They never let me get a job because they were using my government money that I was getting for being disabled to pay rent and they ended up not saying anything when they got my check a month after I moved out. 3. My parents never let me go out with friends without trying to get all the information they possibly could out of the parents, and basically kept me inside all the time, even throughout high school. Then, after I graduated, they start saying I'm allowed to go out now, but since I barely knew where I am in my own city, plus I didn't have any friends in real life to hang out with because of their rules, I just stayed inside for a year before moving out. 4. My mom would get seriously offended if I said anything bad about my stepfather. If I imply he's wrong about something or give any response that ended up with them saying, Are you calling me a liar? 
it was back to square one. The attitude changed when she ended up with a mark on her cheek after a very rowdy argument between the two, but she didn't take the hint and went back to him. 5. When I was in late elementary or most of middle school, I wasn't allowed to watch Teen Titans Go, Spongebob, or other certain cartoons with similar humor. Weirdly enough, they were all right with Steven Universe, even though they were wildly homophobic. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 8. This has reminded me of some of the things that I went through with my dad and his girlfriend. Like the time I got grounded until I was 18. After a parents evening, the careers teacher stopped us to say that I was basically a good student who always attended the career sessions, which was intended for year 10 and 11 students, despite me being a year 9 student. My parents knew that I had been attending as they were ordering me to go, as I didn't know what job I wanted in the future and so didn't know options to pick. Well, every day when I got back, I was asked what I did, to which I replied with, not much, mostly looked through some stuff and the teacher helped a little. My dad's girlfriend, not my mother, ended up asking what we had done, and the teacher answered in more detail. The teacher then got politely told that I had been saying that I hadn't been doing anything and had been mostly ignored by the teacher. Teacher says this isn't true. I ended up going home, being made to sit at the table, and then get asked repeatedly, why did I do it? I know there's no point in saying that I didn't lie, so kept saying, I don't know. I get asked every five minutes, and every time I don't give the right answer, I end up grounded for another month. This goes on till 11 at night, despite me having school the next day. This was the last time that I can remember that I was able to properly cry and haven't been able to since. Story 9. I'll skip over the obvious abuse parts of my childhood and point out one strict thing that was a huge problem. I don't eat ground beef. It physically makes me sick. Forcing myself to eat a burger results in vomiting a few minutes after forcing it down and explosive diarrhea an hour later. Been that way ever since I was five, whether it was cooked at home or from fast food. My stepmother thought I was just making excuses and would refuse to let me eat anything else, because that's what she burnt for the family that random night she felt like cooking. She believed that if I ate enough of it, I would eventually stop vomiting and destroying the toilet and be a normal kid. After a while, she convinced my dad to stop buying me food at all because I refused to eat burgers. Because I should be mature enough to eat what's provided, despite it making me physically sick in high school at 16. That is how I learned to steal money from them without getting caught to feed myself, and going long periods of time not eating without issue. It's possible I was just fed garbage burgers, and a proper one wouldn't make me sick, but prolonged exposure to the taste of ground beef, accompanied by the negative consequences of eating it, have put me off from it forever. I've tried ground beef as an adult, but it quickly had the same results. So I'm not sure if quality is the deciding factor. Has this person had a job that gives him enough medical insurance to get them checked out? This could be a very serious medical issue. I mean, it's really very frightening that parents don't see something that physically affects their kid and just don't take them to the doctor to get them checked out. It's kind of arrogance to think that they know everything about the human body. I mean, I know it's their kid, but just the arrogance. Story 10. Seeing this title reminds me of something my mother once said while lecturing me. You will not be transitioning in any way while you live under my roof. I don't know if it's exactly a rule, but there was a company, Rainbow Youth, who had raised a bunch of money, and so they were allowing people to order gender-affirming products for free. I ordered myself a binder and had sent it to a friend's house, and the day after I picked it up from my friend, I was woken up by my mother who got mad and kept telling me that I don't care about her feelings for getting the binder. And then my grandmother came in, told me all about her abusive mother, and that I don't know what abuse is. I didn't do anything the whole time, so I don't know why she thought that I thought I was being abused. 
telling me about how people are telling little girls that they are boys to solve overpopulation or something, and a whole bunch of other stuff. I left the house and cried at a park up the road for two hours. And my parents are the people who caught my SH about eight times and essentially told me to stop, saying that it was hurting them and that I hate them and I don't care about their feelings. I didn't hate them then. And when I was sent to counseling, my school sent me. Story 11. My stepdad would count all the food in the fridge, every Mountain Dew, every yogurt, and write it down before he left to make sure I didn't eat any. He also took the keyboard and telephones. I was never allowed to hang out with friends because I was an embarrassment, they said. He always said he had three girls instead of four, counting me out. I wasn't his bio daughter. I was my mom's from a previous marriage. He would hit me with a twisty thing on the blinds. I was removed at age 14 after he caught me self-stimulating, and he hit me between the legs as punishment. It swelled and turned black, and I had to have reconstructive surgery. I'm 30 now, and he hasn't met any of his grandkids. We haven't spoken since I was 17. Edit. My mom was aware. She just never left him or did anything about it. She just told me to hide in the room and not come out. As for my sisters, they were biologically his. He taught them at a young age that they were better than me and that any time we didn't have any money or they couldn't have that new toy, he'd blame me. He'd say to them, Well, you could have had this if she wasn't here. After adulthood, it was discovered he was on some hardcore substances. I haven't forgiven him and never will. Story 12 my father was extremely strict and unpredictable while I was growing up. He wanted me to do chores, but if I didn't do it the exact way he expected, he would forcefully take over himself and tell me to take a seat. He wanted me to go out more when he was in denial that almost no one liked me and I was ceaselessly bullied until my late teens. He always wanted me to sit with a straight back and speak a certain way so no one thought I was crazy. He also tended to psychologically project his own problems on me, like saving money. I moved out late, at least for someone in my generation. And through my preteen years onward, my father had a nasty habit of gambling his paychecks away. I'll never forget how shocked he was when I told him how much I'd saved while living at home as a young adult. He thought I was spending it all like he was. He always had a hopelessly addictive personality and often took his frustrations out on whoever lived with him, usually me. Now he's expiring, and my mother has to watch him constantly to make sure he never tries to light up a cigarette while his O2 is on. I have no choice but to forgive him, because he only has months left to live. Story 13. I have a story. For context, I am a teenage girl. I help out for three hours a week with kids aged three to five. One day during snack time, the kids were getting a drink from directly out of the sink. A mom, who was also volunteering, said to me, My boys drink out of the sink all the time, although obviously her daughter's name doesn't. And that seriously angered me. She wouldn't let her daughters drink out of the sink because she was a girl. The water fountain is on the other side of the building, so the three-year-old was going to be forced to walk all that way just for a drink. I couldn't go against the mom's wishes, but I did have the other girls drink out of the sink right in front of her. Story 14. Grounding can be a decent way for your kids to learn not to do stupid stuff, but there needs to be a limit to it. Limiting to the point you can't socialize is bad enough, but doing that and banning your kid from seeing their friends is basically solitary confinement. Kids are human, and humans are social creatures. We need socialization beyond just family members especially if said family members are awful and abusive. Banning kids from books as a punishment is also just wrong on so many levels. That's a surefire way to kill your kid's love for reading. Same goes for hobbies. That's just gonna make your kids sneakier and make them resent you. Story 15. I had a friend in high school that had a very abusive father and a mother that enabled the abuse. He never really told me much about it, but I eventually figured out it was physical and emotional. When he turned 16, he managed to find a job and used the money to go to the gym. He turned into a beast in about a year and a half. I asked why he was going to the gym so much. 
He told me that he wanted to beat his dad within an inch of his life, and lo and behold, on the day he moved out, he attacked his dad and proceeded to do so and left. The only reason why no charges were ever pressed was because he had evidence of the abuse. Story 16 My parents were actually pretty strict when I was younger, but looking back, it, for the most part, was them just not knowing how to raise an ADHD neurodivergent kid. I don't really hold a lot of grudges against them, but I do blame them for my anxiety. I found out years later that it's genetic, but how they raised me made it worse. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.